Hey guys, this is MJ at His Truly, locating and educating prodigals at risk in these final hours, moments, nanoseconds prior to the rapture of the church, which we know is more imminent today, this very second than it ever has been, one day closer to looking into our Savior's face. Who is ready to go home to that place where Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you, that where I am, you may be also. The place where no eye has seen, no ear has heard, nor has entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for those that love him. I'm ready to go. And you know, the rapture is imminent. It's a beautiful day here today in the panhandle. I'm sitting outside, there's a light breeze. You know, the Bible says that the, the rapture is going to happen suddenly, very suddenly. And there's nothing that needs to happen prior to the rapture. Guys, um, you know, there's a lot of mocking and scoffing going on regarding the rapture. But the Bible says that that will happen in the last days. It says there'll be scoffers and mockers that say, where is this hope of his coming that you guys talk about? Trust me, it's going to happen. Romans 8, 8, 7 says, the mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. Okay, so remember, people who are not born again don't have a clue. They're in spiritual darkness. So can we blame them? No, we have to reach them. How do we reach them? The gospel. The gospel is 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, that Jesus Christ died for our sins, according to scripture, that he was buried, and on the third day rose again, according to scripture. That is the simple gospel of our salvation. It's not by works. The Bible says it's through, by faith alone, by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. Not of works, lest any man should boast. If you look around at religion, there's a lot of boasters going around, patting themselves on the back, back, oh, look what I did. God's going to, it's like getting brownie points with God. When the fact of the matter is, Jesus said it is finished on that cross. And it was finished for this whole wide world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not come into this world to condemn this world, but that through him we might all be saved. But not all of us will be saved. There is a liar. Satan is a liar. He came to steal, kill, and destroy. He is a murderer. He is a murderer from the beginning. Everything that's going on in this world is right on cue, guys. Right on cue. The destruction that's happening. And, you know, the enemy will tell people, Oh, if there was a God, if there were such a God, this wouldn't have happened to you. If there were a loving God, there is a loving God. That came, gave his life, came to his own creation. Perfectly God, 100% God and 100% man. God became man in the flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory jesus said we must be born again to enter into the kingdom of heaven what does that mean that means that we are all born into this condition called sin all of us were conceived in this condition called sin so from the get-go none of us had a chance you can say i was born this way all you want fill in the blank well however you were born i was born in addiction Okay, we're all born in a dysfunctional family. I mean, Adam and Eve had the perfect father. Okay, and look. So we must be born again. What does that mean? Born into Christ's righteousness. We did nothing to inherit that righteousness. We did nothing to obtain that righteousness. We inherited only by Christ's righteousness. Understand that. That there is nothing that we did. It's not by works to get us saved. So we're born again into Christ righteousness. What he did on that cross. So how do you get born again? A is to simply admit, yes, I am a sinner in need of a savior. Ooh, nice win. B, believe, and this is key. Believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and that God raised him from the dead. For your own personal sins. For the forgiveness of your own personal sins. 
and see call upon his name. The Bible says that all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved, not might be saved. And I would do that now, friend, while time is still here, because tomorrow is not promised. You could walk out your door today, and do you know where you're going to spend eternity? You need to have an answer to that question, because eternity is a long time to be wrong, and we all spend eternity somewhere. There is a literal heaven, and there is a literal hell. There is a literal God, and there is a literal Satan, and they are by no way equal to each other. Satan is a created being, created by God for God's own purposes. So, I would do that now, friends. Okay, so... Like I said, the mind governed by the flesh is hostile toward God. And you know, even born again people who are Christians, my soul was governed by the flesh for a long time. My mind governed by the flesh and was hostile toward God. Blaming God, you know, for my dad's death and blaming God for different things. Um, and if there was such a God, you know, Satan loves to mock God. And he is the accuser of the brethren. He stands day and night before the throne of God, accusing us, the brethren. Ah, oh, did you see that one that your child did? Did you see that one? And he'll whisper in our ears, oh, God doesn't care about you. Go ahead, take that drink. Go ahead, take that drug. Who cares? You're, you're believing all this crap? This isn't true. God hasn't showed up for you. Those are his lies. Those are called the wiles of the devil. And I know that there is a devil, for his demons had me in chains, a prisoner of sin and torment that started out as an innocent game. My hands were tied behind me with handcuffs made of steel. This life was one big question mark. My nightmare was very real. I wanted to run just as fast as I could to where I did not know, hoping to escape hell's fire and find shelter away from that foe. Through my journey into darkness, I felt a hand reach out to me. He said that he was my savior and only his blood could set me free. He promised to protect me, keep me from all harm, clothe me with his righteousness and give my heart a song. He handed me the book of life and his words were very clear. This is my plan for all of mankind. You'll find your way in here. Yes, my friend, there is a devil. There is a devil. 1 Corinthians 2.14, the man without the Spirit does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, as they are spiritually discerned. Like I said, we're all born dead. We're all dead men walking. We are zombies, so to speak. And then, when we call upon the name of the Lord, the Holy Spirit moves in, takes up residence in this very unworthy, unfit temple and counsels us and becomes our best friend, our comforter, our guide throughout our journey in life. And the Holy Spirit is about to be removed from this earth, the restrainer in what's called the rapture, when we are gathered unto him. And that's gonna happen imminently, guys, imminently. So for us born again Christians, it's time to get excited. It's time to share the good news. Like I said in yesterday's video, we are all born for such a time as this. I don't know what your works are. We're not saved by those works, but we are saved for those works. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works that God prepared before the foundations of this earth. Good works that we should walk in them. All right, we all should be sharing the gospel, planting seeds in these final moments because there will be a massive revival. Massive, I believe the most massive revival on earth during the tribula tribulation. Those seeds that we have planted now. I mean, if people, the people that we're sharing with refuse to accept Christ now, um, as a sacrifice for their sins and don't believe, there'll be a lot believing during the tribulation as soon as that trumpet sounds. And hopefully you won't be on the other side of that TV when they say millions have disappeared. You won't be on the other side of a YouTube video when somebody is telling you, sharing the gospel, and you've heard that millions have disappeared. 
because it's going to happen. It's going to happen once, okay, the rapture of the church. And then comes the seven-year tribulation, the most horrific time on earth. Read after chapter, chapter 4 in, in the chapter uh, book of Revelation. Um, and we go to a wedding. Heaven is preparing for a wedding right now. Earth is preparing for a war. Okay, everything that we see happening right now, the puzzle pieces are fitted, being fitted into place precisely the way the story unfolds. Okay, God is not surprised by any of this. God knows the beginning from the end. He knows you by name. He knows every hair on your head. Don't let the enemy lie to you. Okay, and I wanted to share from y'all, um, I wanted to share... The whole honor God. This is my mom's Bible, by the way. And um, look at this print. Don't you love it? It's like a 20 font. I don't know. But my mom's with the Lord now. But this is actually the living Bible. All right. This is the whole armor of God. That's my encouragement to you today. That we put on the whole armor of God. Because spiritual warfare is off the charts. What we see only with our natural physical eyes is only an indication of what's going on in the spiritual realm but understand God's got us covered we're surrounded by angels every moment of every day we are hedged in and protected we belong to Jesus Christ the author and finisher of our faith okay a final word be strong in the Lord and the power of his might put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil now what are his strategies i hate to interrupt when i'm reading the scripture here but and i'm by the way i'm not a pastor or a teacher simply a redeemed member of the body of christ a prodigal brought back from the brink of death and addiction for such a time as this um have a lot of friends that went on to their death but immediately were in the presence of the lord um we don't go to hell as a prodigal and this is not endorsing sin um, the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And a lot of us as prodigals didn't make it. And a lot of my friends didn't make it. My best friend Susie did not make it. Okay, um, so there's no such thing as a partial rapture. Understand that. That is ridiculousness coming from the devil himself. Trying to do works gospels uh, works creating up in people's minds oh i have to do such and such amount in order to maintain my salvation no you don't jesus christ said it is finished he's the one that gets all the glory not us understand that truly understand that in your heart and accept that grace and understand who you are in these final moments put on all of god's armor so that you'll be able to stand firm against the strategies of the devil what are his strategies just like i said go ahead and take this other drink Go ahead and, and, you know, keep using drugs or go back to this lifestyle because it just simply doesn't matter. You got to kill this pain. Or there's no God. Why you believe in that stupid stuff? How could there be a God? Look what's going on. You know, Israel, look at Israel, what's going on in Israel. Exactly. It's in the Bible. Don't believe when the enemy comes against you with negativity, trying to redefine your identity. Know who you are in Christ. I've linked the ABCs of Salvation in the description box along with who we are in Christ. It is imperative that we know who we are as Christians in these final moments. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood, but against evil rulers and authorities in the unseen world against mighty powers in this dark world against evil spirits in heavenly places therefore put on every piece of god's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil then after the battle you will be still standing firm stand your ground putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of god's righteousness for shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. 
Pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. And that's what we're doing in these final moments. Um, the battle's heating up, isn't it? And it's raging on. And it will continue to rage on. It's not going to get better, guys. It's going to get worse. Um, not for us. We need to stay prayed up. Stay in the Word. And here comes these dogs. Dear Jesus, help. Okay, this is called Called to Arms. Be still. There are some big dogs in this neighborhood. I long to hear your voice more than you long to hear mine. I long that my name is upon your lips, and I bless you for making me your defense and your strong tower. Have I told you today how very special that you are to me? Soldier, you know it's a war, and we are his soldiers. We would not be called soldiers if we were not expected to fight. This would not be called a war if we were not expected to fight. This is not only a physical war, guys. Pray for the nation of Israel. Pray for everyone that's lost. But this is a spiritual battle. Let me remind you now that any scars that you have obtained in this battle have eternal value in my kingdom. Take the authority that I have given you and wear the garment that I have given you. You, my little fallen soldier, never need be afraid again. For with far greater power than the enemy has foolishly attempted to destroy you with, I am raising you up. For the very weapons that were formed against you have now become very transparent jewels, reflecting my love, not only for you, but for my prodigals. Clothe yourself with my humility so that I don't have to. Carry these marching orders with you, child. Hide them within the walls of your heart. And don't ever let anything or anyone take them from you. For their cost to me is far greater than you dare imagine. You are very valuable to me and your life is hidden in me. You must purpose to seek me with everything within you and allow me to define your earthly existence. I promise you that you'll never regret it for the rewards are eternal and true. I am with you always, beloved, even unto the ends of this earth. Arise, my love, I have equipped and released you for my call. First Peter 1 Peter 1.7, Behold, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Even so, amen. So know that there is something called the second coming. It's not the same as the rapture. Those are two separate events. We come back with the Lord at the end of that seven years. That's when every eye shall see him and even those who pierced him. And Israel will be hidden in Petra and two thirds of the Jews will be killed. Okay, understand what the Bible says. We are in the final moments in that timeline. The 70th week of Daniel is for, is the time of Jacob's trouble. Jacob is Israel, it's not the time of church's trouble. Um, we are not appointed to wrath. Jesus took our wrath on the cross. Okay, and this is called, I'm going to end with this, the master archer's broken arrow. So know that whoever you are, if you belong to Jesus, you have a specific calling on your life with gifts and talents that he put inside you. And the Holy Spirit abides within you always, and it is the Holy Spirit who will speak through you and do those works, not you. Because any work that is done in the flesh are works done in the flesh. We don't care about those works. We wanna leave the Holy Spirit to do what he does best, okay? For years, the arrow lay on the ground, broken and bruised, unable to fly, void of destination or purpose. But to the master archer, oh, that broken arrow exhibited a beautiful interior, visible to his eyes only. Over the years, the broken arrow grew stronger and wiser under his most excellent care and regularly felt ready to be used by his divine bow. She felt so certain that she was getting sharper with each pass of day, but when she approached him about flying, the master archer would respectively tell the little arrow that although she was indeed getting stronger, she simply wasn't strong enough to make her point yet. 
He promised her that one day very soon he would use her for mighty things, which she knew not of, if only she patiently endured the healing process necessary to fly. Some of us have longer healing processes. Some of us come from different home environments, dysfunctional homes, sexual abuse, physical abuse, domestic violence, and the Lord has to heal us of that, doesn't he? He has to give us our innocence back. Only he can give us back what the enemy stole from us. The little arrow felt unquestionably ready to fly, but agreed to wait her turn as the master archer had instructed her to do. Someday she felt twinges of jealousy as she stood in the meadow watching the other arrows soaring high in the air, effortless, effortlessly reaching the archer's destination. On those occasions, she'd jump up and down in excitement, yelling out to the master archer, I'm ready now, use me, please, let me be next. Master Archer would gaze over at his little broken arrow out in the field, and although he was thrilled by her obvious enthusiasm, he would smile kindly and tell her, Not yet, little arrow. I'll let you know when you're ready. It isn't time yet. The little arrow would look down at the ground in disappointment and courageously yell back at the Master Archer, How will I know when I'm ready, though? You'll know, he said gently. I'll call you by name, and when I do, you will instinctively know to what purpose and destination you've been called for every fiber of your being will inhabit that intended purpose. The little arrow obediently and joyfully walked back to the field, anticipating her turn to be used by the master archer. Then one day it happened. Unexpectedly, as the little arrow was playing out in the field with her friends, she clearly and unmistakably heard the call. He's calling my name, she exclaimed in wide-eyed wonder as she scurried past her friends. Did you hear that? She screamed in delight, the master archer is calling my name. As she stumbled by the other arrow and bid, bid each one farewell, she quickly ran towards the sound of his voice. When she arrived, she was greeted by the master archer himself, and for the first time in her life, she found herself up close and personal with his bow. She had always heard about the brilliance and beauty of the bow from the other arrows, but their description could never measure up to what her little eyes now beheld. Every color of the rainbow shined with a glorious and visible transparency, with majestic colors only visible to the spiritual eye. As she stood there gazing at the splendor and magnitude of the master, master's bow, she found herself strangely wonder if she was indeed ready to fly after all. As she felt the master archer's hand strategically placing her inside the bow, she suddenly felt sick to her stomach and against her own better judgment shouted, wait, I'm not ready yet, master. His divine chuckle made her heart beating more rapidly. Do you see that bullseye straight up ahead, my little arrow, he asked. Yes, I do, she screamed out of nervous anticipation, trembling now beyond control. You see that circle of darkness in that target? He asked, gazing steadily upon it. Yes, Master, I do, she said, tears now streaming down her face. I only thought it was ready, though. But now that I'm here inside this powerful bow, I think not, she said, ferociously trying to release herself. Master Archer's face lit up with kindness that she'd never seen before, and he began to speak in a tender softness that melted her very heart. This is my bow of mercy, he said gently, and your substance, little arrow, is now sharp enough to pierce through the darkness in that target up ahead. It is not by your power, nor by your own might, that you will hit it, he said, but my own strength and determination that this target will be reached. Do you understand that? He asked as he repositioned the little arrow back in the bow. Yes, sir, I do, she cried out in excitement, and I will fly as high as you intend for me to fly. I promise not to be afraid, for it is only by your hand of mercy that I now find myself in this bow. Hmm. Do I look shiny enough, she asked herself, looking down, straightening out her clothing. Master Archer chuckled once again. You, my little arrow, will be flying so fast that you won't be seen at all by the natural eye. Only I will be seen, he continued as he made his final preparations to shoot. Gazing deeply into the little arrow's eyes, the master archer lifted her face and spoke softly while asking her the strangest question. Do you know who you are? Of course I do, she said, annoyed at the question's absurdity. Do you know who I am? Do you know who I am? He continued quietly. Yes, of course I do, she said matter-of-factly. You are the master archer. I am indeed, he smiled as he pulled back on the bow. Little arrow, do you remember the pain? of the darkness from whence you came, he asked. I do, cried the little arrow. How could I ever forget? You must never, ever forget. 
his voice echoed, and with a final thrust of his mighty hand, the monster archer watched as the little arrow flew as straight and proud as he had originally intended for her to fly. As she flew effortlessly in the air, the little arrow knew without a doubt that she would be returning to the exact same spot of darkness from which she had originally come simply because it was the master archer's intended purpose. Suddenly she realized that all the many years she spent out in that meadow weren't wasted at all. All of those years out in the darkness, they were simply preparation for a purpose far beyond her own understanding, equipping her with the wisdom and clarity necessary for this very day, her day of flight. The scars on my body and soul where the enemy sunk his teeth in as he recklessly carried me throughout this land are no longer visible to the outside world. My scars will remain visible only to those who desperately need to see them and finally have ears to hear the knock. A lot of people don't even believe there's a war going on for heaven's sake. I've got the scars to prove it. The amazing thing about it is they were specifically intended by the enemy for my death and destruction. But God has chosen those very scars to bring about healing and restoration. That's just the way our creator is, the master archer. You know, he uses what the enemy meant for our harm and turns it into a glorious treasure that he can utilize for his own glory. If you're a prodigal who just so happens to be listening to this for reasons unknown even to you, if you can identify with even parts of my journey into the darkness and desperate cry of a black sheep's heart, then perhaps the master has hit his target. Only you and God will have the final details though, for he is the master archer and you beloved prodigal are his target. I gave him permission to use this once broken life and he found a place for it in that glorious bow of his. I take no credit for the speed of the arrow or for the results. I had nothing to do with the plan at all. I was broken. I simply allowed him to take my brokenness and fashion it into a substance worthy of his use. I have no doubt that he'll hit his target because it was his idea from the beginning and he is the master archer. Guess I'll let you guys go because this dog is barking. It's always something, right? Always something. But uh, please keep my little granddaughter in prayer. She just got out of the hospital. She was having seizures. Um, her name's Cadence. She's seven years old. Um, we're going to be going to see her. Her birthday is the 21st, so we'll be going to see her. Um, but keep her in your prayers um, for continued healing and, um, and also my prodigal. And I'm praying for each and every one of you and your prodigals. Know that we are so very close, guys. We are so, so very close to the rapture when that trumpet sounds when the dead in Christ rise first, and we who are alive and remain, this final generation, I believe, will be caught up with them and ever so be with our Lord. Comfort one another with these words. Encourage one another as you see the day approaching. I love you guys. Until next time, keep looking up. Our redemption draws nigh. God bless you guys.